Hello and welcome to Meridian News Now. I'm Julie Dunmire. And I'm Adriana Cotero. An update on Costco construction. And how soon Meridian Township residents could be pinching pennies at the big box store. That's our top story tonight. Costco is a few steps closer in coming to East Lansing and Meridian Township. Home TV's Camille McCombs has that story. During the most recent East Lansing City Council meeting, approval of the site plan and brownfield for the Costco development project were approved. Now it is up to Costco to decide if they can move forward with the project. You know, if, if those approvals take place, I would anticipate that they won't have any trouble meeting their, I think they had indicated that they wanted to be open next fall. Costco asked East Lansing and Meridian Township for a combined $1.8 million to help reimburse them for some of their construction costs, but the entire amount wasn't approved during the City Council meeting. We agreed to pay for some of the studies that had to be done on that property um, and work uh, that is clearly environmental protect, protecting the environment uh, in that area. Uh, which br brought it to $1.5 million. Although East Lansing City Council approved the $1.5 million, the amount exceeds what Meridian Township originally agreed to pay, so a separate agreement will soon go before the Township Board. Right now East Lansing has indicated that they would be willing to um, do anything over that million, so that would that point five would be East Lansing's and the Township, as in the original agreement, would still only be subject to the $1 million for the cap on the brownfield. Meridian Township and East Lansing will be paying back the $1.5 million over a 15-year time span. The actual cost of the construction will be reimbursed to them with the money they pay us. So it's, it's a good deal for both communities. In Meridian Township, Camille McCombs, Home TV. The Meridian Township Board will take action on the amended agreement at the December 13th meeting. The next steps for Costco to move forward is to submit for building permits. This is in order to begin construction. There is no set date on when construction will start, but if everything goes as planned, Costco says they'd like to get started in late spring 2017. A celebration for 175 years. The township is having a historic birthday and 2017 is going to be a year of events, kicking off with a bang on December 31st. Home TV's Deborah Guthrie joins us now live at Studio C with all the information about why Meridian Township is choosing to ring in year 175 at the movies. Deborah? Anniversary in 2017. And Meridian Township has teamed up with Studio C, which is where I'm at here today, to celebrate and kick off their 175th anniversary with New Year's Eve fireworks. The fireworks take off at 6.45 in the evening Weather permitting, they are hoping that there is not a blizzard and that there's not snow that evening so that the fireworks can take off. And in the wintertime, the light lasts a little bit longer, so they will be brilliant in the sky. Celebration Cinemas is a family-friendly atmosphere, and they are fully embracing the event and the kids' activities. They have activities of their own that they will be bringing out. Meridian Township has a documentary that they will be showing. It is called Meridian the lines that define us and Studio C has donated their largest theater space for two showings that evening so that the documentary can be shown the first 75 people to enter the theater for both showings will receive a free time capsule gift on behalf of Meridian Township Oscars Bistro behind me is creating a Moscow mule type of drink it's called the Meridian mule take that for what you may it's called the Meridian mule and it's a special anniversary mug that anyone who orders the drink can have. The Friends of Historic Meridian are involved with this. Over 25 people, including Friends of, of Historic Meridian, have been interviewed for the documentary. They expect to have a killer turnout here in the evening. There will also be a vintage photo booth with classic photos so family members can take a commemorative photo of their New Year's Eve activities. It starts at 4 p.m. and it ends at 8 p.m. in the evening. Jane Rose, the local historian, will be on hand doing a book signing. Uh, she will give a brief presentation before each of the screenings as well. There may be a surprise that evening, we're told, but we can't quite let that out of the bag. So with that, we want to show you a trailer for Meridian, The Lines That Define Us. Sometimes we forget how much a simple line can shape our history. We communicate through lines. 
wage war over lines. Some cross the line, some toe the line, some prosper under deadlines. We have property lines, we build with lines, we move on lines, we stand in line. Our lives are defined by our line. 2017 marks the 175th anniversary of Meridian Township, a township based on such lines. Celebrate with us on New Year's Eve at Studio C as we kick off the year-long commemoration with a film about how a simple imaginary line defines so much of who we are today. Now that was just the trailer. You can view the entire documentary on New Year's Eve. And after this week's big winter storm, residents are now bundling up and making their way outside to remove the snow from their sidewalks quickly. The current snow removal ordinance in Meridian Township says residents have 24 hours from the time it stops snowing to remove the ice and snow from their sidewalks. And if you don't shovel your sidewalks within those 24 hours, people can make complaints. After those complaints are made and the township makes a visit to your home, you have another 24 hours to remove it completely. And if you still don't shovel it, a township crew will be sent out to plow your sidewalk and you will have to foot the bill. It's typically, uh, once we receive a complaint in a neighborhood, we try to canvas the entire neighborhood to see if there's other violators. So residents don't feel like they're just uh, you know, being picked on one individual. We really try to enforce the ordinance uh, as evenly as possible. Residents should be advised as they are responsible to take care of any snow mounds that accumulate on the corners of driveways and sidewalks as well. The wetland use permit for Mayberry Homes is approved. The request is to close a portion of an open drain to build a road for a new subdivision called Silverstone Estates, currently in the process for approval. The subdivision will be located east of Powell Road, road north of Grand River Avenue. In Meridian Township, any work in a wetland requires a permit. Meridian Township has signed off on that permit and it will likely start in the spring. As long as the water gets where it's supposed to be, it doesn't necessarily matter if it's open or closed. In this area, uh, the drain is open right now. It just runs on the surface of the ground, but they want to enclose it. So what will happen is they'll, in a, in a pipe, they enclose this area. So they're taking like 192 feet of the drain and putting a pipe in, digging down putting a pipe in and then putting dirt on top of it, and then they will build the road over the top of that. At the December 6th Township Board meeting, the board unanimously voted to approve two grants, the 2016 Assistance to Firefighters Grant and the Regional Hazmat 2016 Assistance to Firefighters Grant. These grants will help first responders obtain critically needed equipment, protective gear, emergency vehicles, training and other sources needed to protect the public and emergency personnel from any related hazards. Meridian Township becoming more green with a new sustainability and climate action plan. At the December 7th Environmental Commission meeting, the green team presented the plan. It includes five objective categories. Objectives included energy efficiency, renewable energy, recycling and waste reduction, transportation and water management. The green team feels that educating the community about the issues is a top priority. We could um, collaborate between departments and between uh, organizations. If we put the question out there, maybe someone else might have ideas or maybe there's someone doing it that in a neighborhood where we can highlight that success story. The Michigan Green Communities will meet on December 22nd to give input on this plan. Over the past six years, we've saved a quarter of a million dollars on energy. 80% of those savings goes into a resolving energy fund. This fund along with grants is expected to fund the plan. Coming up, Meridian residents receive a warm welcome. And how the election recount panned out. After the break on Meridian News Now, your source for community news. Our police, fire, and public safety organizations are an important part of our daily lives. See how they serve and protect by watching Beyond the Badge on home TV.
Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat, and I'm doing a downward dog, and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Whether it's in the senior center, or out in the community, Senior Living helps older adults get the most out of Ingham County. Watch Senior Living on Home TV. Welcome back. A presidential recount started in Michigan on Monday of last week and ended Wednesday after an order by a federal judge. But what goes into a recount and how the process works? I was there with the details. Here's that story. What's the magic number? A recount. Seven, eight. To make sure it's right. To uh, make sure we have their, we, we get the uh, people put in office that we, we, we want to have in office. Michigan, the second state to begin a presidential recount after Wisconsin, started going through ballots. One. By one, by one. Two. On Monday, after an order by a federal judge. Put in two tiles. Observers like George Mooring are here for one thing. Well, I think we should do it for our nation, not particularly for any party. This recount is happening because Green Party candidate Jill Stein says she wants to make sure the election is accurate and secure even though the outcome will not likely result in a Stein presidency. This is bipartisan. And Mooring is looking for inconsistencies, like... Maybe uh, the Oval was not completely filled in. Lansing City Clerk Chris Swope says before the recount can start, workers must... Make sure that the ballots are properly sealed in a ballot container. And the first step in the process is for recount workers to count the number of ballots in their ballot bags. They're checking to make sure that the number of ballots they currently have match the number of ballots that's collected on election day. And if that number is different, they have three chances to get it right or else that precinct is determined not recountable. Yeah. So we are at 100. Once a precinct is determined recountable, One. there are a couple different processes allowed. From my understanding, the process that is most likely to be used this time is to actually take the ballots and put them in a separate pile for each candidate. Five, we will now crisscross so we can get a fast count up to our number that we're looking for. Workers are paid by the county, and despite the recount being cut short, Jill Stein still has to pay $125 per precinct for the recount. But that's only for the precincts that have successfully completed their recount. I think we should be doing this on a, on a systematic, a regular basis, um, because machines are, uh, are fallible. And so far... Yeah, we had no challenge since I've been here, so that is good. And the numbers all matched up. Clerk Swope says that most of the time, if a ballot is counted wrong, it's because of a simple human error like too light of a pencil mark. And another reason some ballots in Ingham County, says County Clerk Barb Byram, were considered not recountable, tears in canvas ballot bags or even bags not being sealed properly. 
Shaping the Avenue, down Grand River, and Michigan to encourage development. The goal of the Shaping the Avenue project is to put guidelines in place so that the space is connected from Michigan to Grand River. Representatives from Lansing to Lan Lansing Township, East Lansing, Meridian Township, and CADA attended the tour. CADA hopes for an agreement to connect businesses and create a pedestrian-friendly environment. Try to open that up to make it all more connected. Uh, that cuts down on the traffic. And then if the people want to go to one restaurant and other members of your family want to go to the other one and you can just say fine <laughs> you go that way and you walk that way and your park's somewhere in the middle right an effort to inspire economic development to support new and existing neighborhoods the town planning consultants are hoping to work with community staff business owners and citizens to make this work the holidays are just weeks away and finding the perfect present can be tough Hazlitt Library is making it easy on everyone with their traditional Hazlitt Friends book basket silent auction. I went to the bookend store to find out the details. Here's that story. A tradition uh, gives a, a person a chance um, to look back and to look forward at the same time. Hazlitt Library's bookend store does just that, being a place for residents to donate their used books, and those books you bring in each year are used for more than just reading. As they come in each um, month, we go through the books, and if we think that they uh, are in such great condition that we could put them in uh, a basket, then we set them aside, and then in November, we go through the books and see how we can uh, collect enough of one particular idea for a basket. A basket for the annual Hazlitt Friends Book Basket Silent Auction, where community members bid on the 25 wrapped baskets. Book and volunteer coordinator Ginger Petty says these make for great holiday gifts. Uh, people seem to enjoy it. Uh, we've had several people that come every year and buy several baskets because it's completely uh, put together. They don't have to wrap anything. It's got a gorgeous bow. Hazlitt Library has turned this event into a tradition, making its way from a New York library. Friends of the Hazlitt Library board members, Greg Wade uh, is uh, goes back to where he grew up in New York every year and his little tiny library in his little tiny town does this and he brought the idea to us. An idea that many Hazlitt families look forward to each year. So we've had people standing around when the last bid is done to see if they won. Oh, it's wonderful to see that. Keeping traditions alive in Hazlitt, Adriana Cotero, Home TV. Today, December 12th, is the last day to bid on these baskets, with the auction ending at 8 p.m. in the Hazlitt Library. Spreading joy in Meridian Township. That's the mission of two groups, Welcoming Michigan and Take on Hate, when they launched the Stand Strong Respect Michigan Pledge. This pledge asks for community governments to take the pledge to welcome all people to their community in light of disturbing comments made at a national level, says Meridian Township Treasurer Julie Brixey. Right after the election, I began receiving calls from people who were uh, very concerned about the um, hate occurrences that had been happening not only in um, our local community but throughout the country, and people were very disturbed by it. Julie Brixey, Township Treasurer, along with the rest of the Township Board, took the pledge. And coming up, a look at sports with Home TV's Roya Burton. Roya Burton is officially here. How are the local teams doing? Thanks, Julie and Adriana. Coming up, we will take a look at both Haza and Okemos, whose girls and boys teams both had matchups this past Friday night. Okemos took home two wins while it was a different story for the Haza boys team. When we come back to Meridian News, your source for community news.
They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat, ugly, disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back. Both Hazlitt girls and boys took on Owasso last Friday night. A positive night for the girls who edged out Owasso 54 to 31. I had the chance to cover the Hazlitt boys team and it was a fight to the finish. At halftime, Hazlitt led Owasso 29 to 18. A change of pace going into the third period would have Hazlitt fighting to hold on to their lead. A shot from the outside would have Owasso trailing by only three points with less than two minutes left in the third period. Cal McIntosh would put up three for the Vikings, but it would not be enough. Owasso took it home with a final score of 54 to 44. Oakham has played a solid game against Lansing Eastern. Luke Stagg gets the ball and the Chieftains move the ball around very effectively. A pass to Ryan Safan, he'll take the open three and the team will lead 34 to 15 going into the half. I thought for it's nice to have a game where you felt like you were in charge the entire time and we felt like we had control. who gets it to him head Watson who goes up for yet another three. The Chieftains keep the momentum up winning the game 75 to 35. The Okemos girls basketball team ballot out last night Friday against Lansing Eastern. A swift pass to Leah Hartman who goes up to make the open shot. The Chieftains who are moving the ball around effectively take the easy jumper making it 47 to 23 midway through the third period. Another rebound by the Chieftains they take it full court and take the open shot. Coach Kristen Rasmussen says that they showed some good things, but it's hard to improve only playing once a week. Okemos, however, secured a 63-45 win over Lansing Eastern, moving to 3-0 for the season. That's all for sports this week. Back to you at the desk. Now we take a look at this week's Pets of the Week from the Capital Area Humane Society and Ingham County Animal Control and Shelter. First up from the Capital Area Humane Society is Kip. This three-year-old pup is looking for a new home. He has a thirst for life that can't be beat. Kip would love a home that would give him lots of opportunities for exercise to keep him happy and healthy. He is very smart and loves to learn new tricks. Kip has lived with cats and other dogs as well as he is fr a friendly pet, pet to have. Now from the Ingham County Animal Control and Shelter, meet Baloo. This awesome little guy loves people and loves to snuggle. He has a hard life so far, but with a little TLC in training, he's going to make a great companion. Baloo has a cute little face and a smile that you just can't resist. For more information about these pets and where to adopt them can be found on our Home TV Facebook page. And that's all for this week's Meridian News Now. Remember, you can always stay up to date with Township News at HomeTV.net or by following us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Julie Dunmeyer. And I'm Adriana Catero. Thank you for watching.